Yo, it's your friendly neighborhood filmmaker here. Adventure filmmaker, that is. <laughs> and today we've got another episode of Tech Tuesdays. A few weeks back, I shot a timber frame build for Jesse and Alyssa over at Pure Living for Life. And a lot of people direct messaged me and commented on how I did the moving time lapses in that project and also what camera rig setup was I using to shoot this thing. But before we get to either of those things, we're actually gonna address my super functional DIY production van. I've got it right and I got it wrong. The van rig has been killing it. And, and it needs to because basically it's my home base for shooting out of this entire project. Obviously, this is an outdoor shooting project and there's a lot of filming to be done and, and media managing that needs to occur. And so basically I have the Sprinter van set up as a really cool base camp for basically self-sustained charging and managing of all the filming and life needs. Which This has been some of the, the coldest nights that I've spent in the van so far, which is kind of fun. I've got a really big duvet, which is nice, but getting out of the van in the morning's hard. I was self-sustained the whole week for charging and powering the van with this Honda generator. One of the best investments I've made for helping the van be truly production ready in any scenario. That's basically what's been powering this entire rig so that way I can be uh, self-sustained and off their system and all of that. I've got a table in the back there where I've been offloading my media and then inside of that bin and around that bin is where I've been charging all my stuff. And that's been going really well. I shot everything on 128 gigabyte SD cards. When a card was full, I'd take it into the production van and offload it on my laptop. My laptop has two internal hard drives. So right away, I was making sure I had two copies of the master media. From there, I copied the media to a third external drive at the end of each day, so that way I could have a hard drive to leave with the client at the end of the shoot. It's been like a very run and gun documentary vlog style. And my rig for the week basically went between two configurations. This single handle setup, and then a double handle setup with an extender on the wooden handle. Notice how shaky this B-roll is that I'm getting of the GH5 right here. That's because I'm using the GH4 with a prime lens with no stabilization. That's why the GH5 is really basically the perfect camera for this type of shooting because it has that internal stabilization. It does dual image stabilization with the correct lens. And the kind of shots you could get handheld with this zoomed in are pretty ridiculous. All these shots you've been seeing right here are shot handheld with the GH5 and the results are simply stunning. The most surprising thing about this setup for me is I actually use the kit lens the most, the 12 to 60. Normally I don't use it because if I'm at f2.8, it's not a constant aperture. But if you stop down to f4, you get that constant aperture again. And it's nice being able to push in that extra bit of distance as opposed to the 12 to 35 that I'm used to shooting with. The small HD focus monitor was really invaluable for this shoot. It powered the whole camera rig through the onboard L-series battery. It's just a really great monitor for being able to check focus and frame your images. I'm kind of kicking myself for not buying an external monitor sooner. For sound, I was using the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus with everything attached to the eight sync cage with small rig accessories and handles. For motion control, I use the Kessler second shooter system. I've got a five foot TLS rail, which I often had the GH4 on with a seven to 14 millimeter lens. The GH series cameras has a built-in time-lapse function. So that was really handy to be able to just self trigger the camera. And I also used my shorter stealth slider to get some other time-lapse angles at various times, often using Jesse and Alyssa's Canon ADD for this. I also snapped the lens on my A6300 in half. I'm still trying to pretend that didn't happen. The drone I was using for the shoot was the Phantom 4 Pro. It's got that larger sensor, produces a really nice image. Throughout the week, I accessed my gear in and out of the Shimoda roller bag. More and more, this bag has been growing on me a lot. I really, really enjoy the doctor style opening how you can just pop it open, load things from the top, and then close it quickly. And lastly, the only light I pulled out on this shoot was the Aputure 300D. The work lights just weren't cutting it as we moved into the evening. So I set up the Aputure 300D and it is incredible how much light it blasted onto that job site.
I hope you enjoyed a bit more of a detailed look into the timber frame shoot. But now that we're back in the studio, I've got some confessions to make. I spent a couple hundred to a thousand. I spent a couple thousand dollars on equipment for the studio. A lot of it was just the little things that add up. I bought these multi chargers finally for my different batteries. I'm just getting so fed up of the tiny little chargers and I wanted just a better solution for charging all my batteries. I'll let you know how these guys go in the long run. I bought some various HDMI cables. I got some different rig components for trying to use V-mount power for my GH5 setup. I'm trying to look at a system that I could use for longer shoulder rig days. I also bought some new Kessler gear, a stealth slider at the two foot length and one of the motion control motors for the second shooter system. I'm an ambassador for the company, so I got a discount off this when I bought it. But again, I'm not gonna use products that I don't really like. And this stuff is some of the most robust, heavy duty motion control equipment out there. It's also the most versatile. I like that I can use it for my sliders for time-lapse. I like it that I can use it for interviews going back and forth. And I also got this arm here from Canova, which helps stabilize the slider on a single tripod, something I'm very excited to put to use. Can't believe I didn't buy one of these sooner. Multi-leveling plate for the slider, which is actually really handy when the slider's at an angle and I wanna level out the pan and tilt head. There's a little bracket hanging off the side that didn't really do anything and it prevented my slider from going all the way to the end. So I just took out my grinder and cut it off. It didn't really seem to fit any purpose. But uh, yeah, definitely recommend one of these if you're using a slider. If you got other questions about gear, drop them in the comments and I'll address them in an upcoming episode. And just remember guys, please just go out and make stuff with what you have. Don't get distracted with gear, even though it is super cool. That's gonna be it for this one. Remember, life's better when you make stuff. Peace.